Good day, this is Donna Lea P. Bendia, and our topic for today is about different kinds of contraception. And this is actually under the topic sexual self uh, and the subject understanding the self. Okay. So uh, before we proceed, let us define first what is contraception. So this is actually um, the intentional prevention of pregnancy or conception through the use of uh, different or various devices sexual practices, chemicals, drugs, or even surgical procedures. So we have uh, two kinds of contraception. We have the natural methods and we have artificial methods. Under natural methods, we have abstinence, calendar method, basal body temperature, cervical mucus method, symptothermal method, ovulation detection, coitus interruptus. And for artificial methods, we have oral contraceptives, transdermal patch, vaginal ring, subdermal implants, hormonal implants, or hormonal injection, intrauterine device, or IUD, chemical barriers, diaphragm, surgical cap, male and female condoms, and surgical methods. So let us discuss this one by one as I move on with the slides. Under the natural methods, we have the first one, which is abstinence. So this is uh, refraining from any kind of uh, sexual intercourse. And uh, this is actually the most effective natural birth control method with ideally 0% of failing rate. So this is also considered to be the most effective way to avoid sexually transmitted infection or sexually transmitted disease. Okay. However, uh, most people find this difficult to comply and uh, only few people use this method. Next, we have the calendar method. So this is also known as the rhythm method. Okay. So this one entails from with, uh, withholding coitus or sexual intercourse during the days that the woman is fertile. Okay? So according to the menstrual cycle or monthly period cycle, the woman is likely to conceive um, three or four days before and three or four days after ovulation. Okay? So the woman needs to record her menstruation or menstrual cycle for six months in order to calculate the woman's safe days to prevent conception. <clears throat> so you will see from here, uh, okay, so the three days safe period before uh, the period or the menstruation starts. And then we also have the blue days here considered a safe period and the pink days considered as the safe period. Next, you have the basal body temperature, <clears throat> or BBT for short. So uh, this one indicates the woman's temperature at rest. So before the day of ovulation and even during ovulation, the BBT falls at uh, 0 0.5 degree Fahrenheit. So it will increase to full degree because of the progesterone level. Okay, and then it will maintain its level throughout the menstrual cycle. So this serves as the basis for the method BBT. So the woman must record her temperature every morning before any activity. So any slight decrease in the basal body temperature followed by a gradual increase in the BBT can be a sign that the woman has ovulated already. Okay, next we have the cervical mucus method. So you will see from here um, different illustration or picture of the cervical mucus and uh, what does it mean, okay? So the change in the cervical mucus during ovulation is the basis for this method. So as you can see, if it is some kind of um, sticky and scant or paste-like, okay? So it, uh, it, it indicates that the woman is infertile. Okay, same as if, if it looked like thick or creamy or lotion-like, so it means also that the woman is infertile. 
However, if it is wet and watery, it means that the woman is fertile and Okay, so if the cervical mucus appear to be uh, some kind of uh, egg white or stretchy, okay, so it signifies that it is the most fertile period of the woman. So usually, uh, this is what you know the property of spin birthday, wherein uh, you can stretch it up until uh, one inch and it is very slippery, okay. Next, we have the symptothermal method. Okay, so basically, uh, this is the combination of the basal body temperature method and the cervical mucus method. So we're in, uh, you're going to monitor your uh, basal body temperature, and you should also take note of the changes of your uh, cervical mucus. So it's the merge method of the BBT and the cervical mucus method. Next, we have the ovulation detection. So what you can see from the screen is an example of an ovulation test. Okay, so it also looked like a pregnancy test. Okay, so you can actually buy it over the counter. And uh, what you need is a urine specimen from the woman. So if you're going to collect this urine specimen, it is advisable that you collect it um, in the first urine in the morning. Okay, so because it contains the luteinizing hormone that could really detect if you are ovulating or not. Okay. Next, we have coitus interruptus, or simply it is called as withdrawal. Okay, so uh, this is when the man um, withdraws the moment the moment that he ejaculates, so that uh, the spermatozoa will be emitted outside of the female genital organ. Okay. So uh, one of the disadvantage of using this method is uh, the pre-ejaculation fluid that contains few spermatozoa that might also cause um, fertilization for the woman. Okay, so let us now proceed with the different artificial methods. Okay, so first one is oral contraceptives, or this is also known as the pills or pill, okay? So uh, this one contains synthetic um, estrogen and progesterone, okay? So the estrogen um, suppress the follicle-stimulating follicle hormone, or which is also known as the FSH, okay? And also the LH, or the luteinizing hormone that could prevent ovulation, okay? Uh, moreover, progesterone also decreases the permeability of the cervical mucus so that it can limit the uh, axis of the sperm cell to the egg cell, okay? So it is suggested that the woman take the first pill on the first Sunday, okay, after the beginning of a menstruation, okay, or as soon as it is uh, prescribed by the doctor. Next, we have transdermal patch, okay? So you can see it's like a sticker, okay? It also contains estrogen and progesterone, and uh, you have, I mean, the woman has to apply it, apply one patch every week, okay, for three weeks. So it could be applied on the abdomen, on the upper outer arm, on the upper torso, on the buttocks, okay. So uh, at the fourth week, no patch will be applied because it's going to be the start of the menstrual flow of the woman. Next, we have vaginal ring. So... Uh, this one released a combination of estrogen and progesterone as well, and it actually uh, surrounds the cervix of the woman. So this is made up of silicon, and it is inserted into the female reproductive organ, and it will remain there for three weeks, okay? and uh, it's going to be removed on the fourth week, and then after that, the menstruation will occur, okay? and the woman becomes fertile as soon as the ring removed. Okay, next, we have subdermal implants. So they are they look like rods. Okay, uh, these are two rod-like implants that are inserted underneath the skin of the female during her menstruation or on the seventh day of her menstruation to make sure that she will not get pregnant. Okay, 
So, um, this implant could last for three to five years. Next, we have hormonal injection. So, what you see is an example of a hormonal injection. So, depo, dep. All right. So, this uh, hormonal injection uh, contains medroxy progesterone. Okay. So, this is a type of progesterone that is usually given uh, once every 12 weeks intramuscularly. So, this injection um, causes in the causes changes in the endometrium and the cervical mucus, and it can help prevent ovulation among women. Okay, next we have the IUD or the intrauterine device. So as you can see, this is a small T-shaped object. So it also contains the progesterone and it is inserted in the uterus uh, via the reproductive organ or the vagina. So this one prevents fertilization by creating um, a local sterile okay, inflammatory condition to prevent implantation of the zygote in the uterine wall or the uterine lining. Okay? So the IUD is fitted only by doctors, by a physician, and it's going to be inserted inside the woman's um, genital organ. Okay? Uh, during her menstrual flow, okay, and uh, this device can uh, be effective for five to seven years. Okay, next we have chemical barriers. So chemical barriers come in different forms, such as um, spermicides, vaginal gels, creams, glycerin film, okay, uh, jelly, suppositories, foaming tablets, and these are used to cause the death of the sperm cells before they can even enter um, into the cervix. And it also lowers the pH level of the female reproductive organ, so it will not be conducive okay, for the sperm to live. Okay? On the other hand, chemical barriers could not prevent you from uh, having sexually transmitted infection or sexually transmitted diseases. Okay? Next, we have diaphragm. So this is a circular a uh, rubber disc and it can fit to the cervix okay and it should be placed before coitus or sexual intercourse okay so the diaphragm um, works by inhibiting the entrance of the sperm into the female reproductive organ okay and it also works better when you use together with a spermicide that kills the sperm cell uh, the thing is the diaphragm could only be uh, fitted by a physician or by a doctor and it should uh, remain in place for six hours after coitus and then you have to go to the doctor again so that the diaphragm must be removed out of your genital organ so it is some kind of um inconvenient okay unless okay unless uh, you are in the hospital next is cervical cap so this is made of soft rubber and it is fitted on the rim of the cervix okay so it is shaped like a thimble and uh, it has a thin rim and it could stay in place for not more than 48 hours. Okay, next we have the male condom. So this is made up of a synthetic uh, rubber shift and it is placed on the erected um, male reproductive organ before its penetration into the female reproductive organ so that it can trap the sperm, sperm cells during the ejaculation. So this uh, condoms can also prevent sexually transmitted infection, okay? And uh, it could also be bought uh, over the counter. So uh, regarding the failing rate, the failing rate of condoms is like uh, 2% and a typical failing rate of 15% because it might uh, break in the sheet, okay? And, uh, you know, the, there might be some leakage of the sperm. <clears throat> Next, we have female condoms, so uh, they're also made of the latex rubber sheets, and uh, they are pre-lubricated with spermicide, okay? Uh, there are actually two uh, rings, okay? They are bound by two rings. So the outer ring is inserted against the opening of the vagina, and the inner ring is the one that covers the cervix, okay? So it is used to prevent fertilization of the egg by the sperm cell.
Okay, so let us proceed now with the different surgical methods. The first one is vasectomy. So this is for males. Okay, so there will be uh, a small incision on each side of the scrotum of the male. Okay, and then the vas deferens will be tied up, could be cauterized, cut, or even plugged. Okay, so after vasectomy, the patient is advised to use uh, a backup uh, contraceptive method. Okay, until uh, two negative sperm count results are recorded because the sperm could remain viable okay, uh, in the vas deferens for at least uh, six months. Okay? So next we have um, surgical method for female. Okay, so uh, this, the surgical method for female is the tubal ligation. So this is performed after the menstruation of the woman and before the ovul ovulation period. And this is done through a small incision okay, under the woman's umbilicus, which actually targets the fallopian tube. Okay, uh, So it's going to be cut or cauterized or blocked to inhibit the passage of both the sperm cell and the egg cell and to prevent fertilization, okay? So that's all, and thank you very much for listening. If you have any questions, you may send me a message in psicologista.files at gmail.com. Thank you.